first take, we are far away from Bristol, about 45 minutes from the Steel City. We're in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Day two of First Takes Training Camp Tour. We are so happy to be here. Former Steeler Ryan Clark in the house, Stephen A. Smith, Max Kellerman. I'm Molly Karam. We're camping, guys. It's a good place ready? to be. Right? It's a good place to we be. We got a lot. How hey, you doing? How Remember we doing, we do guys? This? We do this. Yes, yeah. A lot of good football reminded. Y'all still slow. A lot of good football. Play here. Yeah, still a lot get, of good get football. <laughs> you know, you know yeah, a little something yeah. about Super that. Bowl a lot of good football. Yes. Yeah. And we have a lot of good football players joining us. D'Angelo Williams, Antonio Brown, and head coach Mike Tomlin. But first, in a story published today, ESPN The Magazine's Mina Kimes discusses the Bennett brothers, an in-depth look at both Michael and Martellus. They believe that the players don't have enough power in the league, that the contracts are short, they're not guaranteed, and they pale in comparison to the NBA. He said, quote, do you know what the NFL stands for? N-word for lease. Stephen A., strong, strong words. Your reaction? Very, very strong words. But before I go into it, I feel it's only appropriate that I go to a former star in the NFL who's got a Super Bowl championship, who is also somebody that represented the players as a player's rep. I want to know what your thoughts are first before I even get into it, Ryan. Well, well, well the first thing, let, let's speak about the brothers. If you've met them, if you've <laughs> talked to them, there's nothing they say that isn't calculated. There's nothing that they say that they haven't had an intelligent opinion on. So that's the first thing. These are not words they're just throwing out or Martellus is throwing out at this time. Michael Bennett came along in the NFL PA as I was kind of ushering out right before I started to retire. He was always in the meeting talking about ways to monetize the player, ways for the players to make more money off of their likenesses. And if you continue to read through this, mm -hmm. you say, okay, this is what they're talking about. How many black owners do we have? How many players are able to profit off of who they are the way the league is making money? Initially, though, when you hear in words for hire or for lease, mm -hmm. the first thing I think is, well, wait, Everybody in the league has the same contracts. Everybody in the NFL. So it's not necessarily to me. At first, it wasn't a black thing. But as you read on, he's saying, hey, the black players who make up most of this league don't get to make money off of who they are. It's not about the player in the NFL. It's about the shield. It's about the owners. When you talk about Roger Goodell, though he says he's for the league, he's paid by the owners. The bonuses he gets are for making those players, those people in suits money, not for making the players on the field famous. That's why he can make a $3.5 million salary, but clear $40 million. And so when you look at these things and the way that the PA conducts business, I don't agree with some of the things he said because they do their best to monetize the player. They do their best to get money into their pockets. But when you look at the, 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 the whole thing, when you look at the whole NFL, the money that's being made, the players aren't making money as compared to what the league is bringing in each year. And that's what they're talking about. Yeah. You look at the NBA, when you talk about LeBron James being able to step up and say things. Also, LeBron James is being the best player is involved. Chris Paul is involved. And he's saying until the quarterbacks, until the people who do get the most money step up and say as players, we want more, we won't get it. And so I like what he said. I just think it could have been put in a better way because it puts people off when you use the N-word. It makes them think that, okay, we're just being racial now. But if you look at the context of what he says, I agree with him in some ways. You just wish he could have articulated in a way where more people receive it. Yeah, I would say, look, first of all, I like the Bennett brothers a lot. I like what they have to say, particularly Michael Bennett. I think he's necessary uh, in the NFL. If you look at the content of, of what was said, it's uncontroversial. It's that's an uncontroversial comment in terms of the content. Has there been a history in this country of exploiting African-American labor? Uh, duh. You know, I mean, like, this is not news. That's, that's uncontroversial. And football, whether we like it or not, I know it takes kids off the street and it gives focus and it teaches the various values that we like very much, et cetera, et cetera, structures time. And this goes for white players, too, obviously. I mean, there are rich white kids playing quarterbacks, uh, right. quarterback, and the dads are paying a lot of money for them to do it. But... What is also true is that football's exploitation on this level. What we're asking these players to do with their bodies is exploitative. And so it is a continuation in certain respects of rich white guys, uh, by rich white guys, of 
African-American labor. I don't think that is a, you know, well, they're making millions and yada, yada. Yes, they are. They're paid well for the labor, but it doesn't mean it's not exploiting what they're doing at a real physical cost. As you mentioned, when he drops the N-bomb, it does two things. On the one hand, it draws attention to the comment. I doubt we would be talking about this had he not dropped an N-bomb. On the other hand, it obliterates the content of what he's saying for many because they can't get past it, even though it's a very interesting use of the word here because usually you can make a distinction. Is someone using this word with a hard R at the end, which is always racist and bad, or is it colloquial with an A, where the meaning is still very controversial, and you could say it's bad, and, and probably that argument wins, but the meaning, at least the attempt, has been to co-opt the negative, you know, co-opt the word away from the negative and infuse it with some kind of colloquial understanding of what it means. It's kind of splitting the difference, because when he says N-bomb for lease, He's, re he's making reference to a racist past in this country while also using the word colloquially. Still, it obliterates his meaning for most. It obliterates his meaning for most. I get where both of you are coming from. I don't disagree with any point that either of y'all made. But I also want to bring it back to a football perspective in this regard. First of all, you have no business using the word in that incendiary manner because again it obliterates like you said the point that he was trying to make we understand if we read further in the article where he has a line here where he's talking about they know the, the article is talking about how the brothers know what it means to be labor instead of capital corn up because of their dad and talk about growing up black people never owned anything martella says i want to build i want to make well in making that statement one must ask even though if you're Michael Bennett, you may deserve more money, you may want more money, you may be upset at the contract that you signed with the Seattle Seahawks. Yes, Martellus Bennett feels he was also underpaid. He was also underappreciated in Dallas to a lesser degree in New York before going to Chicago where he excelled. Now he's a member of the New England Patriots. But also, let's keep in mind that although you're underpaid, you're still getting paid. So when you talk about ownership, whose fault is it that you're not owning? in terms of the kind of money that you're bringing in. Now, granted, that's apples and oranges, because when you look at Roger Goodell and the money that he's bringing in, you find yourself asking, damn, how are you making this much money? And why are you making this much money? And what exactly are you doing? Because with all the mistakes that you are deemed to have made, the, the fact that you could literally walk away with $40 million, you know, while the players have a hard salary cap and they're being restricted, that's going to be a point of contention. But it's a point of contention that the Players Association has to continue to work to address with the league because they're the ones on the opposite side of the table from the league, which is why you had the courts, for example, saying essentially we don't want to get ourselves involved with it because if you got face-to-face -face negotiations sitting across from the table with one another, that's y'all business to handle, not us, not society. Well, let's take that to the players. If you are a player, yeah, you might deserve 30 million. Yeah, you might deserve 40 million. Yeah, you might only be getting paid 10 to 12 million. But that 10 to 12 million should enable you to do some of the very, very things that you're acting like you're being prohibited and inhibited from doing. And that's just not true. The fact is, if you're Martellus Bennett, if you're Michael Bennett, two good guys, two highly intelligent guys, two conscientious guys, fun-loving guys, because they joke a lot, which is why I had to read this article, because right. I had to get in context. Were they joking? Were they serious? Because they say a lot of jokes that are, are a bit off-putting at times, but they are absolutely joking in a lot of instances and mean no harm to anybody. They're really, really nice guys and highly intelligent. But the flip side is they weren't doing that here. They were bringing attention to the NFL, the business of, of the NFL, and what it is, while at the same time acting to some degree like they're not benefiting to the degree that they're benefiting. Do they deserve more? In all likelihood, yes. But it's not like you're not getting paid. But you know what's you interesting, Stephen A., when you look at baseball, and there are various right. legal reasons for right. this. Baseball is exempt from antitrust rules. It right. functions sure. as a monopoly. It's recognized right. that way. Right. So the players have recourse that they don't have in the NFL and the NBA, by the way. Yes. But when you look at baseball, it must occur to a black athlete that that is a more, uh, a, more a whiter sport, at least. And the traditions have been that way. And that has the strongest union. And even though it's large rosters, not as large as NFL, but certainly much larger than the NBA, uh, and even though it's not near 
nearly as popular nationally. There's no salary cap. Mm -hmm. There's no max contract. And it's not even a full contact sport. So you you might understand why, uh, as yeah. you were, uh, the member of a well, union in, so, in a full contact sport that's largely yeah. African-American says, why are there hard right. caps? Where, right. Why are no, there max contracts? I understand contracts? that, too. But history dictates sometimes where we go into the future. The, the, the baseball contracts and the baseball union and those things, they started in stronger position <laughs> than the NFL Absolutely. PA started. And, and so now by our government exactly played favorites with the sport of baseball compared to other uh, sports. sports. That's why I was Nash America's national right. pastime. And so exactly so right. now when you're fighting, you're fighting from a deficit. It's not necessarily that the NFLPA is not moving football players forward. It's fighting from so far back. And I was a part of the lockout. And during the lockout I was prepared to not play. But with the amount of people you have, with the contracts being what they were before the lockout, you didn't have 1,500 guys who can stay home and say, I can take I'm care of them. I'm not blaming the players. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm, not. I'm saying the league functions effectively as a monopoly so that when negotiations come, when the CBA comes up, the idea that that's not a monopoly is absurd because if you're one of the best players you practice yeah. your whole life to be one of the best in the world at what you do, there's no other bidder for your services. It's ridiculous to but think, well, true, you don't Max. have to take but the that, contract. But, but that's true, Max, but at the same time, some Times in today's day, we're blaming the leagues more than we should instead of leaning on the point that Ryan Clark just made. From an historical perspective, you're operating behind the eight ball if you're the National Basketball Association, if you're the National Football League, as opposed to if you're Major League Baseball because the Players Union has religiously and universally been very, very strong throughout the decades. But the flip side to it is this. When you speak to lack of ownership or whatever, I thought the most salient point that was made by the Bennett brothers was that when they asked a question about how many black owners are there in the NFL because you know there are some black people who would love to own an NFL franchise, get a group together, do what you got to do. And so as a result, you know, you don't, you're a board of governors, you don't have to let them in. You don't, you, you, you get to select who you will allow to have an ownership stake in your league under that NFL banner. So that's a strong argument, but as a player, even though I will openly acknowledge that they both deserve more money as far as I'm concerned, the flip side to it and what, that, what cannot be escaped is the fact that the money that you're making is not prohibiting you from doing more. And there are a lot of players in the league who get that money, who spend it, but don't necessarily do all the right things with it. And then they want to look to the NFL well, or somebody well, here's else the, but here's and point the thing, the finger. Though, and that's I, not accurate. I, I, I think the, the difference in that is, though, they're not speaking about what they can do outside of football with the money that they're making. They're speaking of the money they are making playing football, the money that they're able to generate for themselves because of what they've been able to do. And when you talk about the owners, and, and black owners and them it's a good it's a good old boy club no question when they sat across the table from us in negotiations we realized there was a difference but you know what you and, and, and we're here at Steelers training camp yep. and the Rooney rule always pops up in my mind because the Rooney's a great old school yep. you know Northeast football franchise and family and all that stuff and because of the Rooney rule a guy like Mike Tomlin even gets a look and as much as people object to the idea that they're just checking a box it's just they just have to bring a guy in an interview but the fact is when they did that there was Mike Tomlin in an interview and I'm quite sure Mike Tomlin in an interview blows everyone away in right. the room right and but you have job. To... And the, I, I bring that up because it's about introducing people into the old boy network into the into that's that true club. but it can't be gratuitous it can't be a token interview because if you do too many of them then ultimately your cache dwindles because you're the guy owners call upon to come in and do the interview to make us look like we were really entertaining diversity when we really were not so in that regard i think that's it's something not that, that we have to enough, watch out for. it's not that it's enough it's that mike tomlin is the head coach of the pittsburgh steelers because of that rule giving him the opportunity to that get is in front true. of those Listen, people I was, i'm speaking I was here. to your point yeah, about sure. the nfl owners sure. Right. I, I was here when that happened. And it was Mike Tomlin, when he came in, he wasn't the guy for the job. He came in and took the job. Right. He <laughs> earned the job. But it also speaks to different owners in the fact that the Rooney rule was put in to give these jobs the opportunity, these, these guys the opportunity for jobs. But you also have to take it seriously when they come in. And you also have to take the rule at its nature and believe in it and think mm -hmm. it's true and not use and it as a token, not just to check off the list. And because there are the guys players. that do that. Right. right. But let's stay on the players. Because you're absolutely right about that with the coaches but in the same we're here at Steelers camp we are here this is Steeler Nation they got six Lombardi trophies okay in their hallways 
And we're talking about a coach in Mike Tomlin, universally respected, one of the great coaches in football, uh, and probably the best interview in all of football. I can't wait for him to come on the show no today. Doubt. But here's the flip side to it. We're also talking about Antonio Brown. Who's, who's, who's universally recognized yep. right now as arguably the best receiver in all of football. 136 receptions, tying Julio Jones, 1,800 plus yards, 265 catches over the last two years. Four and a half game with Landry Jones and Mike Vick. That's four and a half games with Landry Jones, Michael Vick, 375 catches over the last three seasons. And because he's two years removed, he ain't getting paid. We, he ain't getting By paid. the way, I want to yeah. get he this get in paid. before we wrap this. We'll sure. Charles Barkley brought this up right. the other day. We, we, we talked about it last week in the beginning of the week. This always comes up in these kind of conversations. There's institutional or societal responsibility. In this case, I'm about the responsibility of the NFL, the yep. institution of the NFL. Yep. And then there's personal responsibility. In this case, Stephen A., you're bringing up the players. People of a progressive bent will tend to focus on the institutional responsibility. People of a conservative bent will tend to focus on personal responsibility. Both of them are legitimate point of views, and yep. they both have a place in the discussion. I agree. Right. Totally. Well, and totally. Just the last thing for yeah. me, this conversation got to a lot of black and white. And I think that's what the comment and using the N-word brought yes. us to. It was a broader question. It was a a broader interview and quotes by these guys because it's about the player and the owner and the league and the ownership of yeah. the league. And I don't mean ownership as in owning a team, the ownership that each person gets to take in what they do, right. their value but and that, what they bring to the table. But that is why it comes down to black and white because the absence of that power to the mind's eye in a part on a part of a player ultimately takes you there and that's the problem that's why I couldn't be avoided yes the n-word shouldn't have been mm -hmm. mentioned but the n-word was emblematic of clearly what he feels because he believes did, that as a black man not a football player that's why this is happening did it have a good effect problem. or not because on the yes, one hand we don't talk yeah. about this if he doesn't drop the n-bomb yep. on the other hand by dropping the n-bomb many the course people of the are going to turn off as long as he's willing to back it up mm -hmm. it's a good thing I'm not saying using the N-word, no, no, right. yep. but the subject is a good thing. And we're talking about right. it. We'll leave it there. You can check out the full comments from the Bennett Brothers, this piece in its entirety in ESPN the magazine. First take just getting started from Steelers camp. When we come back, a little more contract talk. Guess who's buying dinner? Tyron Matthew, he got paid. We'll tell you about his contract details. React to it when first take returns from Latrobe.